Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Adrian and today we are going to continue coding the ideal Rankin cycle using Pyromat and we are going to focus on adding a reheat cycle in this model. Let's get started. If you've watched my previous video, I discussed how to use Python to code or determine the thermal efficiency of an ideal Rankine cycle. And today I'm going to build upon that and then we are going to add a reheat cycle. So we are going to have a high pressure turbine as well as a low pressure turbine. And we're going to compare the results between the ideal Rankine cycle, which has just one turbine, and the ideal Rankine cycle with a reheat, which will have the high pressure turbine as well as the low pressure turbine, and see what the differences are in terms of thermal efficiency. Now on your screen you can see there's a picture of the Rankine cycle. It starts off at point one where a pump pulls condensate from the condenser and pressurizes it. It then goes through the boiler, gets heated up to point three and then it enters the high pressure turbine. Once it expands through the high pressure turbine it gets sent back to the boiler where it gets reheated and it goes and enters the low pressure turbine, expands to the condenser pressure where it condenses back to liquid. Now if we read the problem we, um, it states that we need to consider a reheat cycle utilizing steam. Now the steam leaves the boiler and enters the turbine at four megapascal and 400 degrees Celsius. After expansion in the turbine to 400 kPa, it, the steam is reheated, so it's sent back to the boiler and it's reheated to 400 degrees again. And then it expands in the low pressure turbine to 10 kilopascal. 10 kilopascal being the pressure of the condenser. And it asks us to determine the cycle efficiency or the thermal efficiency of this Rankine cycle with the reheat. So we are going to go about as we did in the previous video, we're going to look at each individual element in isolation. So we're going to start off with the pump, move on to the boiler, look at the high pressure turbine, look at the low pressure turbine, and then end off with the condenser. And then we're going to calculate the thermal efficiency. So first off, we initiate our Pyromat library and we make sure our configuration is correct. So we import Pyromat as PM, which is short for Pyromat. And then we're going to have a look or just making sure that our unit pressure is kilopascal and our default pressure is 100 kilopascal. And then we create a variable called multi-phase water and we're going to call the multi-phase water library from Pyromat. That is essentially our steam tables and then we're going to start off with the condenser. Now we know that in the condenser it's a saturated liquid so x equals zero and we have a few knowns that they've given us and one of those is that the pressure at point one that is just after the condenser or is the condenser is 10 kilopascal and then the liquid gets pressurized through the pump to for megapascal, which is 4,000 kilopascal. And now we need to determine the work required by the pump to pressurize the water to four megapascal. Now we can do that by just saying that the work of the pump is the specific volume times the change in pressure. So that is P2 minus P1. Now we do not have specific volume, so we can quickly go and calculate that. Specific volume is the inverse of density, and we can get the density from our steam tables. And because it is at a saturated liquid, we can say that we want the density at the saturation line, so that is why we say dot ds, and then we can give it one value, which is pressure equals pressure one. And because it's saturated liquid, we want the first element. The second element will be at saturated vapor. Once we know that, we can run it and we can see that the work required by the pump to generate or to pressurize the water to four megapascal is four kilojoules per kilogram. After we've calculated the work required by the pump, we can now go and calculate the enthalpy at point two. The enthalpy at point two is equal to the enthalpy at point one plus the work required by the pump. Now we don't have the enthalpy at point one, so we can calculate that as well. Enthalpy at point one is again at the saturation, saturation line because it is saturated liquid. So we can say HS and we can just give it the pressure value of the condenser. Also because it is saturated liquid, we need the first element and now we can run it. And H2 is 195.8 kilojoules per kilogram. Now that we know the values at point one and point two, we are going to move on to the high pressure turbine. 
The pressure of P3 we know that is equal to P2 and then we also have been given the temperature of the steam before it enters the turbine which is 400 degrees but we are working in Kelvin so we need to add 273.15 to convert it to Kelvin. Now that we know that we can calculate the enthalpy at 0.3 and we can give it the pressure values and temperature values that we've been given. We can also calculate the entropy at 0.3 and we can use the same pressure and temperature values to calculate that. 0.4 will be the point after the high pressure turbine. That is when the steam has expanded through the turbine, it's generated work. And we know for an ideal Rankine cycle, the entropy before the turbine equals the entropy after the turbine, so S4 equals S3. We also need to calculate the quality of the steam that exits the high pressure turbine and we can do that by activating the quality callback from the multiphase water properties. We're going to ask Paramount to calculate the temperature but also report the quality. So we can say entropy is S4, pressure is P4 and we want the quality of the steam so we set that to true and it is the second element the first element will be the temperature, but we are, are interested in the quality. Now, already we can see that we haven't specified P4 yet. Now, P4, they tell us, is 400 kilopascal. The steam expands from 4 megapascal through the HP turbine to 400 kilopascal. Now, once we know the quality of the steam, we can calculate the entropy after the high pressure turbine, and we can use the quality that we've calculated to get our entropy. Enthalpy. The last thing we need to also calculate is the high pressure turbine, the work generated by the high pressure turbine, and that is the change in enthalpy. So it would be the enthalpy value before the high pressure turbine, subtract the enthalpy value after the high pressure turbine. So now we can go and run the cell, and we can see the quality of the intermediate pressure steam is very close to saturated vapor, but it's just not there, it's 0 0.97, and the work generated by the high pressure turbine is 528.2 kilojoules per kilogram. Next, we can move on to the low pressure turbine. Now, the pressure of the steam before it enters the low pressure turbine is the same as when it exited the high pressure turbine, which is P4, so P5 equals P4. They also tell us that the steam has been reheated back up to 400 degrees, so that has been given to us. So we just need to convert that to Kelvin. And now we can again go and calculate all the properties of the steam 4.5. First off is enthalpy, and we give it the pressure at 0.5 and the temperature at 0.5. Entropy can also be calculated 4.5 using the same pressure and temperature values. We also know that the pressure at 0.6, that is after the steam has expanded through the low pressure turbine, is the same as the condenser pressure, which is P1, and that the entropy at 0.6 is the same as the entropy at 0.5, because this is an ideal Rankine cycle. The entropy before and after the turbine is the same. We can go and calculate the quality of the steam after it's exited the low pressure turbine. We call that X6 and we're going to do the same. I'm going to ask it to calculate the temperature using entropy but we want the quality of the steam. So we're going to set quality equals true and we want second element. We are just interested in the quality not the temperature. Then once we've got the con um, quality we can calculate the enthalpy after the low pressure turbine 0.6 giving it the quality value that we've calculated as well as the pressure value. And then lastly we go and calculate the work that was extracted from the working fluid by the low pressure turbine and that is the difference in enthalpy which is H5 minus H6. Now we can run the cell. We can see the quality of the, of the steam Exiting the low pressure turbine is 0 0.9669. That is very close to saturated vapor. It's a very wet steam. And then the work generated by the low pressure turbine is 769.3 kilojoules per kilogram. And the total work output by the high pressure turbine and the low pressure turbine is 1297.5 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we can go and have a look at the boiler. We know the boiler heats up the water before it enters the high pressure turbine and then it reheats it again before it enters the low pressure turbine. So we can say that the heat entered or the heat required to heat it up the first and the second time is the difference in enthalpy before and after the boiler. So that's the difference in 
enthalpy for point two and point three. So that is H3 minus H2, as well as the difference in enthalpy before and after the reheat cycle. And that is H5 minus H4. If we run this cell, total heat input by the boiler for the first heating up of the water as well as the reheat is 3606.2 kilojoules per kilogram. And similarly, we can go and calculate the heat that's rejected by the condenser so that is the waste heat that's extracted by the cooling tiles and that is h6 minus h1 and that is also quite a significant amount of energy right now we have everything we need we can go and calculate the thermal efficiency so we are going to calculate the thermal efficiency and that is the network so that is the work extracted by the turbines. So work by the HP turbine plus the work by the low pressure turbine minus the work from the pump divided by the heat required by the boiler to heat the steam up. And we multiply that by 100 kilo percentage. Now if we run the cell, we can see the thermal efficiency is 35.9%. Now from the previous video where we calculated thermal efficiency of a normal ideal rank and cycle without any reheat, the thermal efficiency was 30.3%. And you can see that is smaller than 35.9% that we got here. So by adding a reheat cycle, we can increase the thermal efficiency of the system. But more importantly, with the ideal Rankin cycle in the previous video, the quality of the steam exiting the, the turbine was 0.75 with versus here, it is 0.97 and this is quite significant because turbines do not like weight steam and if you have steam that's got a quality of 0.75 that means that there's water droplets impinging on the turbine blades damaging them and no power utility wants damaged turbine blades so it's much more beneficial or it's rather preferred to get the steam exiting the low pressure turbine as close to saturated vapor which is achieved if you have a reheat. And that will make sure that your turbine blades do not get damaged by water impingement, which is a plus for power utilities all over the world. And that's it. That is how you go about calculating the thermal efficiency of an ideal Rankin cycle with reheat. If you liked what you saw, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see similar content, please consider subscribing. In the next video, we're going to expand this ideal Rankin cycle further, and we're going to add regenerative heating. Feed water heaters, we're gonna add them and see what are their influence on the overall thermal efficiency. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.